the having thing we talked about before. Could that be a sell on the news kind of event? Again, Bitcoin goes up and down a lot day to day, right. and I think that if people are looking at that, uh, anything could happen. Price sure. could go up, it could go sideways, it could go down, right? Um, but I do think that the halving is just classic economics 101. If you cut the incoming supply from 900 Bitcoin to 450, and demand just stays the same, we don't need more demand for the price to go up. We just need demand to stay the same, cut the supply in half, and then you should have price go up. Now, again, it's not going to happen overnight. It takes a few months in order for this to work into the market, mm -hmm. and so I think that people should expect six to 12 months later to really see that material increase in price. All right, great. So I think a couple of things are going on. First, uh, and Elon's been talking about this in the quarterly calls, um, the consumer is under pressure. There is, uh, even, even though these economic statistics are coming out and saying everything's just fine, you listen to these company reports one by one, uh, m most of them do not sound like these economic statistics are suggesting. And I think Tesla's been telegraphing the h high rates. They've been cutting prices to offset them. Uh, and they will continue to cut prices. So I think there's economic weakness. There has been a bit of a backlash, I would say, and a pause, because you do have GM and Ford saying, wait a minute, uh, we're, we're, we're going to take a pause here ourselves because right. we can't do this profitably. By the way, that's a positive for Tesla, you know, to have the competition doing this. And Tesla's just going full steam ahead. Uh, so I, I do think part of it's economic. Uh, and uh, you can use all these other excuses. But uh, if that is the case, what's going to happen, we believe, during the next five years, and you know that's our investment time horizon, right. we think the cost of an electric vehicle, the average electric vehicle, is going to be cut in half. And uh, Tesla's new block manufacturing uh, techniques and technology, along with AI, are a big right. part of this. Yeah, suddenly three million cars will be able to drive themselves right. with no one. Right, it goes back to that, right. Yeah, and then five million cars, and then... If you live in Arizona, your food delivery could soon be dropped off by no one. Instead, the grub could arrive via a driverless car. Uber Eats teaming up with Alphabet-owned Waymo to launch autonomous vehicle food delivery. Program limited to select vendors in Phoenix, Chandler, Mesa, and Tempe. Uber, Uber Eats, by the way, users can opt for a human driver instead. But with Waymo deliveries, standard Uber Eats fees will apply, but you will not be charged for tips. I mean, come on. Robots don't want tips. They want oil. It is real, and if anyone's ever used the Uber Eats app, it's pretty much going to function in just the route the same way, right? So right now, it's only limited to about five or so restaurants in the Phoenix area. So once you go ahead and place your order, the app will actually let you know that there is a chance an autonomous vehicle could be the one bringing you your meal. At that point, you could opt out, or if you want your next meal delivered by a robot car, you opt in, and the app will actually give you the ability to open the trunk of that car once it arrives. You can pull your food out. And actually, it's the same price, whether it's a robot car delivering it or a human. The one difference, again, Brian, is that with these robot cars, you don't have to leave a tip. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you're joining the Patrons. If you're not a part of the Patrons, make sure you're hitting the Cash App. And we have Pump changing his tune on the Havoc. And we know Bitcoin does not pump around the having, And then we also know the Fed has been behind every single pump. And we know the Fed is shrinking liquidity. And that cheap money is gone. But gold and Bitcoin has given us a signal for something much bigger. And then we have Kathy Woods on Tesla. And Tesla is not just a car company. You have Starlinks, you have batteries, you have Neuralink. It's all about the fourth industrial revolution. And then what I love about Kathy Wood, she talks about hyper deflation. And what does she say? These cars are going to be cut in half when it comes to the cost. And we know this as a fact. And she's saying this because she knows all about the new digital economy. Looking at her portfolio, everything is about the fourth industrial revolution. And then we have corn on a four-day work week. You're off on Fridays. Guys, we know once these robots, algorithms, and drones take over, you're going to be off Monday through Sunday. And remember, the crypto teacher told you. And speaking of sitting at home, we have California governor signs and minimum wage hike. And guys, we know business. If the owner has to pay more, they're going to pass it down to the consumer. This is not the 80s. 
where everybody was sharing. This is all about corporate greed. And if the prices get passed down to the consumer, eventually the consumer is just going to sit it on. And you're going to have plenty of businesses that are going to shut down if they can't turn to a family. And we know here in America, families have been broken apart. When you're looking at all this immigration that's going on, these families are together. And that's the only way you're going to make it in the fourth industrial revolution. And guys, we have evictions and bankruptcies just keep moving up. And it's going to get worse and worse because the sheep are worried about things that don't matter. And by the time they wake up, the robots, algorithms, and drones would have taken over the economy and they'll be getting that free money inside the metaverse. And remember the crypto teacher told you. And when you look at the economy, the only thing you have to do is look at gold. Gold is letting you know everything along with Bitcoin that these fiat currencies are done, but we know the NWO calls the problem, wait for the reaction, and run in with the solution. And it's that programmable money where they'll be able to tell you what, when, and how to buy, and you have three to six months to spend it or poof, is gone. And this money is going to be on blockchain. And we know blockchain gives the NWO the all seeing eye. And remember the crypto teacher told you, because he knows when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. You know, we, we hear from people that Fridays are just not, uh, people are not as productive on Fridays. And so I just think it's an eventuality. When it happens, hard to know. But that should fit into a theme of more leisure for people, uh, which means golf rounds will go up. So and, people are going to play know, more golf on And interest will go up. And so, yeah, I guess courses will be crowded so what on are the, What are yeah. the other investment yeah. ideas then around that idea? Well, anything around, you know, I would say leisure, travel, right. right, experiences, all that type of stuff, right? I mean, that, that makes, you know, if people have more time, they're going to... And are you, yeah. oh, but you don't anticipate letting your traders and PMs not work well, on, if the market's frankly, up. on Saturday, they're working You know guys. something, if, if, they're, if they're taking off Friday and they have a, a portfolio, that's a problem, okay, if the markets are open. So forget, forgetting us, okay, I mean, the vast majority of, of people will get an opportunity, I think, at some point to have a three-day weekend. Workers get paid an average of $16.60 an hour. Tonight, I talked to one worker who tells me living off of those earnings has been difficult. She's supportive of getting a higher pay, but some critics are worried the rising cost will get passed down to consumers. Cheering fast food workers and labor leaders gathered around Governor Gavin Newsom as he signed the bill that will pay them at least $20 an hour to live in California. But others argue this is bad for business and the increased cost will pass to the consumer. This morning, some fast food workers in California will soon be making at least $20 an hour, the highest minimum wage within the restaurant industry, set to begin Monday. It means that we have to raise prices, which we don't want to do. Two Pizza Hut franchises in California reportedly laid off 1,200 in-house delivery drivers in preparation for the new minimum wage hike. There's a lot of pressure on some of these houses for landlords to evict people so they can raise the prices or sell them or turn them into condos. Catherine's case reflects a rising trend in the U.S. With pandemic-era eviction moratoriums and federal assistance programs now gone, some cities' eviction filings are dramatically higher than pre-pandemic levels, in some cases over 50 percent higher. Recently, 75, 72, something like 72, that. 000. 72,000. It's pulled back to 65,000. A narrative they're out there now saying, see, gold is up and Bitcoin is down. It's not a store of value. What do you say to folks who are saying, maybe it's got some investment opportunities, trading opportunities, but it still hasn't proven itself as a store of value? Well, when you want to store value, usually what you're talking about is not storing value from yesterday to today. What you're trying to store value is from today for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, right? And so when I think of Bitcoin, I think about can I actually preserve my economic value for my kids or my grandchildren? And right now, Bitcoin, I think, is probably the best place that you're going to be able to do that. Now, if we go and we look at what people have been historically using as a store of value, there's gold and there's dollars. Gold is up. It's near an all-time high. But we're talking about now it hits an all-time high because it goes up $10, $20, $30, right? These moves aren't meaningful to people who buy gold right here and see a $30, $40, $50 increase in the price. Now, the dollar is down in purchasing power terms, right. 25% since 2020. So you've lost 25% of your purchasing power in four years. 
Bitcoin during that same time period is up 800%. And so what I think people are starting to realize is, wait a minute, if I store some or a large portion of my wealth in Bitcoin, everything around me gets cheaper over time rather than more expensive, and that's what you want out of store value. Barry Fink on our, on our network last week made a lot of news. I mean, are you surprised at how, how much someone like him, he has come around? I mean, a couple of years ago, he was definitely in a no Bitcoin camp. Yeah. Well, I know that there was a lot of people who spent a lot of time with him really educating him. And I think that uh, both Larry Fink and the folks at BlackRock don't get enough credit for the work that they put into it. This is not a, hey, I woke up one day and all of a sudden I think Bitcoin's good now. Right. right? They went and they did the work. They did the research. They really spent a lot of time. There's a, a gentleman over there, Robbie Michnick, uh, who leads digital assets. He spent a bunch of time talking internally with folks, really trying to make sure that everyone knew what is it that we're going to be buying and offering to clients. Now, Larry Fink is one of the kings of finance. If Larry Fink says, hey, I think this has got a shot, people are going to listen. Sure. And so what's interesting is uh, the messenger really matters. There's things that Bitcoiners have been saying for 10, 15 years. But now all of a sudden when it comes from Larry Fink, it has a different weight to it. Yeah. And so I think that we should only continue to see the traditional finance folks kind of take those same talking points and repeat them in different media. There are currency devaluations taking place that people are not talking about. The Nigerian Naira is down 50, 60 percent in the last nine months. Egypt just devalued by 40 percent. Argentina continuing to devalue. I think this is a flight to safety, believe it or not, taking place, a hedge against devaluation, a hedge against a loss of purchasing power and wealth. That's very important. And we saw this even here last, uh, last year in the United States. Regional banks imploded. Right. Bitcoin went up 40 percent. Uh, Bitcoin does not have counterparty risk. Going to a different economy. And we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers in Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box. Uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to eight percent of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American, you know. Uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. 
Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're going to get more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Basic. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told its members that this has been part of the reason here uh, that the system is kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling Treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of Treasury markets. Now it was not just the poor auction. It was absolutely lousy. And, and uh, uh, you know, when, when the dealers have to step in to save a Treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. And Very much a traditionalist. I like staying with the dollar. You know that from when I was there. It's make, mm -hmm. make the dollar the choice. I hate when countries go off the dollar. I would not allow countries to go off the dollar because when we lose that standard, that will be like uh, losing a revolutionary war. That will be that will be a hit to our country, just like losing a war. And we can't let that happen. And too many countries now are fighting to get off the dollar. And crypto teacher and the new world order book plus the three kids books is time to reeducate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get home stocks. The see with the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, so therefore we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Yashua and Grandma Tim. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.